Let's deal with this question of motivation. Um, the, the, the problem is, why should you care? Why should you need to know about uh, measurement? Because after all, your research is more to do with algorithms. Well, I don't know what you're doing, but frequently research does need to compare things. We need to know whether something is better than whatever we before. So if you're doing a, um, a visualization algorithm, uh, you're claiming it's better. Well, how do you know? How, how, are you going to, how are you going to measure what it does in order to be able to say, well, it's better than that, uh, better than previous ones in some fashion? Um, also, quite a lot of research uh, wants to, um, to determine the relationships between things. Now, if you're going to determine relationships between things, invariably you're going to have to do some, some kind of a measure. Um, even if it's a fairly qualitative measure, uh, you still have to do some sort of measurement, and so you, know, you might as well get it right. Uh, some research projects uh, tend to want to characterize things. Now, this is more typical of the, um, the classification um, sciences, such as, um, I think, botany. Um, but even in software engineering, we, we, we simply want to know what the characteristics of something are, and many of those characteristics we want, we want to measure in some way. For example, we talk about, um, uh, in software development, we talk about uh, burn down or, or um, uh, velocity. Well, what is that? How are we measuring that? Some other research uh, projects also want to, to characterize data. Uh, in order to characterize data, you, you try to condense it in some fashion, and that usually involves some kind of measurement. Uh, the whole purpose is this, uh, this particular picture shows is, well, you might be able to say you're here, yeah, but what does that mean? Um, during the development of the, um, the international standard, the, the convener of the committee had a, a habit of also always saying, well, you've done your measurement and you, you've got the answer and the answer is 42. Well, is that good or bad? I mean, getting an answer is meaningful only in the context, and you need to be able to say whether the, the measure you've taken is good, bad, better, smaller, um, whatever it is. Now there is this concept of a measurement model that maps data to information. Now, raw data is simply data; it's got no, uh, it has no meaning on itself, and you you need to. Um, aggregate that data, combine it in various ways to, um, to create meaning in the context. And to do that, you finish up with a measurement model that uh, traces a relationship between the, the information that you need to know, the summarized information, down through to the measurements you're going to take. Now that relationship is um, uh, necessarily uh, mathematical. And there are some um, there are some validity things that you need to address on the way through. The measurement model also establishes a consistent terminology for basic measurement ideas and concepts, right? and that's critical to communicating the measurement information to its consumers. Uh, again, uh, your answer is 42. Yeah, right. What does that mean? And the information model that uh, is defined in ISO 15939, and we'll deal with that in later lectures, maps or defines three levels. There is your base measures, and that is the, um, the original mapping of data onto a measurement scale. So the base measures are uh, taken right there. Derived measures are a, some, some form of manipulation of base measures, one or more base measures. For example, an average is a derived measure. And the uh, third level, we're talking about indicators. So you can combine base and derived measures and eventually finish up with something that, that um, indicates uh, some thing or other. For the measurement process, it must select the, uh, must uh, address the, the selection of which um, which measures as well as provide for the effective analysis of the collected data. So you, you're dealing with 
you, you've got an information uh, need, so how are you going to map the different measures uh, to get you that information? And that's part of the planning of the measurement process. Um, then there is a, a, a set of measurement activities that you really ought to, um, to do in order to assure that the eventual findings are valid. That is, you haven't lost or corrupted your measurements on the way through. Now, the process of doing all this is very similar to Plan Do Check Act. That is, you plan out what you're going to do, you do it, you check it uh, against um, various criteria for is it, is it good, um, and if necessary, you then alter your, your, uh, measurement, your measurement methods to get a better result. Now, an example of, or collection of examples of uh, what questions can measurement answer, we have several there. We can evaluate. So, for example, um, how well is somebody performing? Um, are they doing you know, good or bad? We, we need some sort of a measure. Now, obviously, um, as students, we, well, as, as uh, instructors in a university, we have to measure our students. That's what grades are. And uh, we, we try to arrange our measurement scales and our measurement methods so that better performance gets a better mark. Control. In software uh, development and pretty much any project, you need to know where the project is in relation to where it ought to be. And that invariably requires some measures uh, to give substance to gut feeling. Uh, I mean, many, many years ago, most projects were, um, were steered by um, how, what people thought they ought to feel like at the time. Uh, it, it should be finished now. Yeah, well, how do you know? Now, more frequently, it's uh, by measures. And we want to know a whole lot of things about a project so we know whether it's going off track or on track or it's, it's normal, leave it alone. Um, but there's that. The budget? What, um, where, should, where should the money be spent? Uh, so that requires some measurement of uh, how much money is required and what the, what the payback is and you know, all the cost benefit analysis type of thing. Motivation? How can I, I motivate the staff, middle managers, and all the rest of them? Um, to do the, the, the necessary things for process improvement. You know? um, but I guess that goes for pretty much any change. Uh, in order to induce change, you mostly have to um, point out something and say, well, look, this is not desirable for some reason. And we need, we need it to be something else. You know? we, we measure up and it's a two and we need it to be a five. Or we're at 53 and it needs to be 64, whatever. Um, that's usually a way to motivate uh, things. Um, in, in sports is much more, uh, this is much more common. Um, we can use it for promotion, we can use it for collaboration, we can learn it for, use it for learning, and it's used in learning quite a lot because we do give feedback to uh, students, usually in some sort of a grading. Um, and we use measurement when we're trying to improve things. So as a summary, we select measures to provide information needs for decision making. The measurement models relate measurement data to information needs. There is a measurement process. Uh, it's a fairly, fairly standard, straightforward measurement process, but there is a process and really you should follow it. And measurement works best when it's considered to be an integral part of whatever activity you're doing. All right, so with that, um, we'll go on to the next topic.